Okay. This is the chromatography uh, required practical. And what we're going to be doing in this is we're going to investigate how chromatography can be used to separate and identify a mixture of food colorings. Now it could be a mixture of anything. You could use um, inks, right? Or anything that is soluble that can move up the chromatography paper. Now equipment you need, right, is you need a beaker, which is that there. Okay, you need a wooden spill, which kind of goes across the top. You need a paper clip to hold your paper in place. A ruler, distilled water, which is the liquid that then goes in the bottom. Four known food colorings labeled A, B, C, D, which is the four dots of color at the bottom. An unknown one, which is this one here. Uh, a rectangular chromatography paper and Now, the practical itself. What you do is you get your piece of chromatography paper like that and you draw a pencil line two centimeters up from the bottom of the chromatography paper that is called your origin line and also make sure that you're doing it in pencil because obviously if you do it in ink the ink itself could move put a spot of each coloring a b c d and the unknown on the pencil line now that's then what those little kind of capillary tubes were for so what you do is it's kind of like a really thin piece of glass you dip it into your food colouring and you put a little tiny spot on there. Okay, put another little tiny spot on there and then eventually you'll get the unknown one, which is then the one at the end. I'll just do five spots right, just to entertain myself. Okay, then pour the water into the beaker, right? But what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that the water doesn't, like on this diagram here, because this is not good, Make sure that the water doesn't go over the top of the spots. So I'm going to draw my beaker around the outside of here. And then using blue, I'm going to put my water across there. Right, because obviously if you put your dots underneath the actual water itself, they're just going to dissolve into the water. Then, once it's actually worked, draw another pencil line at the top part of the paper as close to the wet edge as you can. All right, so if that's the wet edge there, Right, then what you do is you get your pencil and you draw a straight line across. Okay, obviously you use a ruler. Right, that is then the solvent line front. Measure the distance in millimetres between the two pencil lines. So from there to there, you measure that distance in millimetres. And you measure the distance for each food colour in millimetres again. So if I just do the purple one, okay, the purple one's gone that far. All right, well, that's the unknown one. What you also do is you also can measure the distance in millimetres from there to there. All right, so let's say that is 10 millimetres and that is 6 millimetres. Now, what you can do from that is you can then work out something called the retention factor. Right, and what the retention factor is, it is the distance travelled by the solvent... So on that other one, I then did it as 10 millimetres. And on the top of the question, what you do, or top of the equation, you then put the distance the dot has travelled. So I think I did it as 6 millimetres. And what you then do is to work out the retention factor, you do 6 divided by 10, which is 0.6. That is then the retention factor for that colour itself. All right. And what you've got to do is you've got to work out all of the retention factors for all the dots of liquid that then you put onto your chromatography paper. Right, so now if you imagine the first one I did, let's say it's a red one, came out as 0.72 as its retention factor, and the unknown had a dot with a retention factor of 0.72, what you could do is you can conclude that the colour in the unknown is the same as the red. So in that practical itself, right, you've got your chromatography paper and probably the most important thing is you just go through the method, right, it is working out the retention factor. So the retention factor is the total movement, right, from the starting point to the end point. And on top of that is the distance the dot moves. So if the dot goes from there to there, it is the distance the dot moves. And just an extra little kind of factual bit of information is you've got two phases. You've got the stationary phase, which is literally the, the piece of paper, 
And then you've got another part of it, which is the mobile phase, which is then when the actual inks are moving based on their solubility up the piece of paper.